Shalom. All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachakodash, Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, whom this world ignorantly calls God, and Yahweh Shai being the name of his only begotten Son, whom this world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well, and peace and mercy to the hopeful elect, those men that are doing his work in sincerity and in truth, around the four corners of the earth, the 144,000, and much love to the one third and you innumerable multitude of you believers out there. To you all, I say shalom and greetings, and I pray, Lord willing, this lesson is edifying through the Spirit. All right. Um. So uh, I was sitting out here uh, with one of the brother Gabar, you know, um, and talking to his family, his little ones, and uh, one of them said, you know, they were like, Shia, I counted the the chariots, you know, and um, <laughs> and they were telling me like I counted twenty two of them. <laughs> hey, you know, I thought it was kind of adorable, you know what I'm saying? But I'm like, it's, you know, it's more than that up there, you know? And so uh, they were like, I know. <laughs> but uh, I wanted to, it made me think of this scripture. Um, this is Psalm 68. And uh, I'm going to read, it's verse 17. I'm going to just jump to the point on that one. It says, the chariots of the Most High are 20,000, even thousands of angels, the Lord is among them as in the sign as in Sinai in the holy place. And, you know, I've always said there are more than that in the heavens. You know, um, the Lord has just given you an example of how grand his fleet is. You know, when we when we go into the word Lord of hosts, right, the Hebrew word there is Tazabawath, which means uh, 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 Lord of armies. OK, the Lord of armies and Lord will not can get that later on, but. I'm going to read this in the NLT. It says, surrounded by unnumbered thousands of chariots, the Lord came from Mount Zion into his sanctuary. You see, sir, there is no true number, you know, to, to think of how many chariots or how many angels there are. Now, the Lord knows, right? But they're unnumbered, right? There are so many that's going to completely uh, overtake Babylon, right? There's going to be so many uh, that's going to overtake the world. And see, these people just don't really understand that how about Shemiah Oshai, when he makes his return, all right, how 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 deadly and dreadful it's going to be to see the Lord's chariots, right? And that just made me think of a scripture too. But um, let me see here. When you go in here, uh, uh, right, uh, James 5 and 4, it says, Behold, the hire of the laborers, who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth, and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth, right? Which is going that word Sabaoth, all right? And it's going to, it's not, it's. Hold on, let me turn this off so I can. All right, of Sabaoth. And that word there, uh, let's see what it says in the Greek. Strong's G, 4519. Sabaoth. All right, Sabaoth. Sabaoth. And it, it says uh, in, of Hebrew origin, it says Tazabah. And I'll go there soon, but it says, Lord of the armies of Israel, as those who are under leadership and protection of Yahweh, maintain his cause in war. Right? And that's starting with the, the angels, the celestial angels. And then how much more his, the chariots and his elect, ultimately. All right? But it says... Um, a military, a military epithet of the Most High. Okay, let let's go ahead and get that word epithet there, All right? And I just, uh, Lord will not forget that other verse, epithet. It says uh, an adjective or descriptive phrase expressing a quality characteristic of the person or thing mentioned. An epithet as a term of abuse, right? But it says uh, f expressing. A person or a thing mentioned. So it said uh, a military epithet of the Most High. So a military army, a description of the Lord, you know, Sabaoth, armies. Okay? The Lord of armies, man. The Lord of hosts. All right? I'm going to see if I can get some Lord of hosts scriptures too. But the word Tazabah here, all right, going in the Hebrew, um, it says that which goes forth, army, war, warfare, Host, army, host, host of organized army, host of angels, right? It says a war, warfare, service, go out to war, soldiers, 
right? It says, um, a mass of persons organized for war and army by implication, a campaign, right? There you are. When you have, uh, Esau and his wickedness, he would always say, we have a military campaign, right? A military campaign. It says literally or figuratively, specifically hardship, warship, worship, I'm sorry, worship, company host waiting upon war. You see, so this, these are the Lord's armies. Tazabah Wath, man. All right, let me type in Lord of hosts. Now, obviously, you got the hosts of heaven as well, right, which are talking about uh, the... Uh, the different uh, planetary objects, if you will, right? You got the sun, the moon, the uh, the uh, the planets. All of those are, uh, he's the host of them as well, right? But generally speaking, when it says Lord of hosts, he's talking about his his war, his, his armies, his chariots, okay? I might just name this Tazabah Wath, right? That's Yahweh. It's the Lord of hosts is Yahweh, and he's sending his son, Yahweh Shai, Right. Yeah, they got the same word there for Tazaba. Right. But uh, I was looking for one that says Tazaba. Wow. But this is a uh, first Samuel 15 and verse two. It says, thus saith the Lord of hosts. I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have. And spare them not, but slay both man and women, infant and suckling, ox and sheep and camel and ass. So the Lord sanctioned Saul to go and destroy everything that Amalek was, Amalek is, so that Amalek has nothing. And these are the so-called J.E.W.s. That's the people that he's talking about when he says Amalek. And that word for Amalek there is Amalek. That's how you say Amalek in the Hebrew, excuse me. Right. But, the, you know, Saul was disobedient and didn't do as Yahweh Shai said. And so ultimately, uh, um, Amalek is still around to this day. And that's why the Lord says in Exodus 19, I believe, or 17, one of the two, he says, I, uh, I will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. He said, I will utterly destroy the remembrance of Amalek. Right. Among the nations. So that's what's going to happen to the Amalekites, man. That's what's going to happen. And and we, we we waiting for that day, man, because then you're going to see a more pure earth, a purified earth without the uh, the um, Amaleks, Am Amalekites around. OK, you know, and I might want to read. Uh, yeah, I'm going to read actually Joe. Oh, I know. Right. Let me get that verse before I forget. I'm going to go back to to that one, too. Uh, Luke. Is it Luke 21? Yep. Luke 21, and I think like 24 or 25. Luke 21 and 26. It said, I'll start at 25. It says, and there shall be signs in the sun. And we're, we're about to see signs in the sun and the moon. They're about to have a great eclipse. The, they call it the great American eclipse, which is going to go through five cities called Nineveh. In Babylon, right? And that that's how you know the Lord is ready to destroy this place. The last eclipse happened. It went through five states, cities called Salem, right? Which goes into teachings of peace. Jerusalem, right? Teachings of peace. Salam, Salem, technically Shalom, peace, right? But there is no peace in Babylon. The Lord crossed that out. There was a big X over America the last time that um, the, the path of the eclipse, man. Right. It says, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring and men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the power of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall they see the son of man coming in cloud in a cloud with power and great glory. So this is talking about Yahweh Shai coming with the angels, the hosts of heaven. And men's hearts are going to fail them for fear just from seeing this great host of armies. Can you imagine that? Seeing an army so great where men die just by looking at it, right? And that's how you know it's a heavenly host because in this life, men might not, men ain't going to pass out from looking at it. They ain't going to die from looking at an army. When they see another army of men, they'll piss on themselves. They'll shit on themselves. They'll run away. They'll cry. They'll scream, but they don't die. But that's how you know the Lord's 
uh, uh, judgment and, and his the visage, right? Let's so the visage of the chariots and his arrival is going to be so dreadful, man, where men are going to die. Matter of fact, uh, in, the, in the NLT, it says people would be terrified at what they see coming upon the earth for the powers of the, in the heavens shall be shaken. Then everyone will see the son of man coming on a cloud with power and great glory, right? Coming on a chariot, right? That's the cloud that it's talking about. So we, the, the all, and he's, there's going to be the fathership and there's going to be a masses of chariots, right? It says, and when these things, going back to the KJV, and when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. So the, the elect, they're looking for the return of Yahweh Shah. They're looking for the return of these uh, unnumbered chariots, right? That's what that's what our minds are focused on. We're waiting for the return of our Lord. But you think these people are considering uh, our Lord and Savior's approach, his return to this earth? Nah, they're not thinking about that. They're so that's why they're going to be. They're going to. They're going to die. They're going to die just at his appearance. How much more when he actually sends his judgment? He hasn't even done anything yet. People are going to die. And he hasn't even done anything, just his appearance. <laughs> you got to understand this, man. All right. But that's why the scripture, Lord willing, we be those men. It says we shall not be ashamed at his coming. Right. We're not going to be going to be we're going to be afraid, but we're not going to be ashamed. We're going to be uh, rejoicing through the spirit as return because we doing what he asks us to do. We've been warning the people. We've been keeping the law, statutes, commandments, believing in Yahweh Shai, do as we're told. So when he arrives, hey, when that good man come. He's coming to wreak havoc to all those who have not who have been disobedient. All right, I'm gonna go to Joel uh two and one. Um as a matter of fact, I'm trying to think of something in this chapter. Let me let me see. Nah, maybe it don't give it to me. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna jump, I'm gonna jump down after a minute. This is Joel two and one. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord Yahweh cometh. For it is nigh at hand, a day of darkness, a day of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and the strong, there had not been ever the light. Neither shall there be any more after, even to the years of many generations. And this is talking about the uh, the, the missiles, right? This is talking about the missiles coming to destroy Babylon, America, right? It's not talking about his actual uh, men in this instance. But, um, uh, you know, I, I want to read this. I'm going to jump down. And this is also talking about the missiles. Don't get that confused. But it's just a powerful statement. Verse 11 says, And the Lord Yahweh shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great. For he is strong that ex execute his word, for the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? And that's talking about his missiles coming to judge. But the angels are going to have their part in this, in, uh, in this as well. Right? You think they, they've been waiting uh, to to judge, they've been waiting to get the the call to come and judge Babylon. You see, the missiles are doing what Yahweh Bashem Al Shai, Yahweh Bashem Al Shai says, uh, according to His will. But the angels are waiting too. Where to bring them chariots? That's like you know Esau. They got new equipment. They got tanks. You know they got they got uh, uh stealth planes. They got fighter jets. You know they got all this kind of stuff, and they're ready to use that equipment to get down. The chariots, they ain't really been used in the full purpose. You know, you know how you get a, a Esau Edomite, he got a new gun, and he goes to the shooting range. You know, that's basically what the uh, what the angels have been doing. They might shoot him around, go to some other planet, shoot him around, but they ain't been able to get down on this judgment, like waiting for the day of war, man. Okay? This is Ezekiel 37 and 10. So I prophesied as he commanded, so as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army, right? And this is talking about the elect, man. The elect waking up as a great exceeding army. And so we're, we're waiting to be reunited with our brothers that are ready to fight this war uh, for Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. You know, uh, the, the angels are tooted up. You know, the angels are ready to get down on the, on the wicked too because, you know, when you hear your brother talk about, man, this dude's wicked, this dude ain't right. You know, man, fuck that guy. <laughs> Imagine how the angels feel hearing our prayers constantly talking about this place. that we shall no longer hold his tongue concerning their wickedness. So they're getting our reports firsthand and taking it back to Yahweh. So you know they getting pissed off too. They're like, man, fuck these people. You know, the angels in that same spirit, man. Um, this is uh 2nd Ezra 13 
And I'm going to jump down to verse um, 26, and the point is in verse 31. It says, The same is he whom the Most High, the Highest, hath kept a great season, which by his own self shall deliver his creature, right? It's me of the elect. And he shall order them that are left behind. And whereas thou sawest that out of his mouth there came as a blast of wind and fire and storm, right? The Lord's going to judge his place by the missiles and by the chariots, their zappings, right? It says, and that he held neither sword nor instrument of war, but that the rushing of him destroyed the whole multitude that came to subdue him. This is the interpretation. So he's going to destroy the Edomites, these other nations that's coming down, scoffing the heathen nations that's shooting against them. They're going to all get taken down, man. All right. That's the multitude in the Valley of Jehoshaphat. They came to subdue, subdue him, but they're going to lose. Right. They're going to be they're going to be afraid. Uh, uh, they they durst fright, though they be so afraid. Right. That's the prophecy in this same chapter. It says, behold, the day is come when the most high will begin to deliver them that are upon the face of the earth. And he shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth, right? So he's going to deliver his elect, but he's also going to be astonishing to the wicked. And one shall undertake to fight against another, one city against another, right? So city to city, right? Down here in West Palm Beach, you're going to have people fighting against people that live in Broward, right? People that live in the Boynton Beach, the next city's over, West Palm Beach, I mean, uh, Lake Worth Beach, Jupiter, Right, he says one place against another. So even your little place, you dudes from down the block gonna be trying to fight each other. One people against another, right? It's gonna be a lot of racial tension. Okay, you know, uh, uh, it, it says and one realm against another. So what realms are we talking about? We have the realm on earth, and the realm that's coming are being you know, the realm of Yahweh Shemuel Shah, the spiritual realm, the angels coming down to destroy the wicked. Okay. It says, and the time shall be when these things shall come to pass and the sign shall happen, which I show before thee. And then shall my son be declared whom thou sawest as a man descending. And when all the people hear his voice, even every man, every man shall in their own land leave the battle when they have one against another. All right. It says, and an innumerable multitude shall be gathered together as thou sawest them willing to come and to overcome him by fighting but he shall stand upon the top of Mount Zion. And so the Lord is ultimately, he's going to destroy all of these uh, evil uh, uh, nations, man. All right. Uh, verse 38 says, uh, and shall, I started 37. And this, my son, shall rebuke the wicked inventions of those nations. They're going to think they can destroy you. How shy, man? That's a wicked invention. And which for their wicked life are falling into the tempest. They're going to get burnt alive by missiles and by chariot fire. And shall lay before them their evil thoughts and the torments wherewith they shall begin to be tormented, which are like unto a flame, right? Because those chairs are going to be zapping, man. So it, that's going to be hot, concentrated, con concentrated laser beams, right? It says, and he shall destroy them without labor by the law, which is like unto me, man. So it is going to be a light thing for Yahweh Shah to destroy these people, man. All right. And that's the, that's a prophecy. And that's what we're waiting for, man. So, hey. Tazabawa, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of armies, you know, and ultimately we got to endure like a hard soldier. So we got our part. The angels have their part. We have our part. Yahweh Shai has a part. Yahweh has his part. But we're all in one. We're all in unison, right? We're all in you. Even the animals are going to come in one accord and get down on these devils. Even the stones, you're going to have people that's having mudslides and stones falling down on people. The whole earth is going to be turned against Edomites, two thirds and heathens, man. The whole earth is going to turn against them, man. So right now, we seem to be the guys on the bottom. But soon, Lord willing, we be on the top with Yahweh Shai getting beamed up while this place is getting set on fire, man. So, hey, Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. I want to give all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Hakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone to rule well. And peace and mercy to the elect. Until next time, Shalom.